Week number two of the 2024 NFL regular season, and we always provide the injury analysis and insight on a Monday following a busy Sunday slate. And there's a lot to get to, so we are very pleased to have the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, with us here on this Monday on the early line. You can see the great work that he and his team are doing at Sports Injury Central. That's SIC or SIC Central SICscore.com, excuse me, as we get things going here in this NFL season. Dr. Chow, thank you for joining us here on the early line. Thanks for having me. Yep, six score is what it is. Sixscore.com. All right, Dr. Chow, the big news on this Monday morning, tweeted out in the last half an hour from NFL Network's Ian Rappaport. Isaiah Pacheco injured yesterday in the marquee matchup against the Bengals, left the stadium in a walking boot and on crutches. The initial tests are saying it is a fracture to his fibula. What does this mean for Pacheco's future this year in 2024? Well, we, we got a lot of good injury analysis this weekend. This one, I have to be honest, I didn't see by video to be an ankle fracture, right? And uh, now there's, <clears throat> there's reports of ankle fractures, but we don't delete tweets. Now, the latest report from Adam Schefter is they need an MRI to confirm whether it's a fibular fracture or is there a ligament or something else. Stadium x-rays are usually very diagnostic for fractures. Perhaps it's a hairline non-displaced fracture or, or it's a ligament. So I guess if you can't tell by stadium x-rays, maybe people don't hate on me too much or not be able to tell off a of video. But in any case, not seeing this as a season ender, it's going to cost them a lot of time likely, but the Chiefs could get him back for a late season playoff run. Mm. Doc, we all saw the major concussion that Tua Tagovailoa did suffer in that primetime game against the Bills. It's not so much about when he's going to come back, Doc, but can you tell us what's the process that Tua Tagovailoa is going through from the game itself till today on some of those tests and also how they determine when he could possibly be cleared? Well, to me, there's no doubt he's going to see multiple neurologists or neurosurgeons and get lots of good opinions. Uh, It's hard to say. Every concussion, you could argue, is a major concussion. No two concussions are the same. Uh, you know, certainly he got hit by DeMar Hamlin, but he also hit the back of his head on the turf. And you guys are showing the pictures and images right there. And this is arguably his fifth concussion in five years, one in college, two diagnosed, but you can argue three in 2022. And now this one, is this automatically, is this career threatening? Absolutely. Every single concussion can be said to be that. But with five and five years, it is career threatening. Is he going to come back in one or two weeks? No. Uh, it's going to need a longer absence. Is this career ending? Not necessarily. If symptoms linger, and indeed will be career ending, if symptoms go away quickly, then he may have a chance to go back, let him determine that. The posturing, the fencing doesn't really relate to the seriousness of it, even though it looks bad to the general public. And note, he's not the highest number of concussions in the league. We focus on Tua because of the controversy in 2022. And, of course, he's a quarterback, premier position. But Mitch Morris, now with the Jaguar Center, with the Buffalo Bills before, has six documented concussions in his NFL career. Pat Fryermuth has had three in his first young, early career at tight end. So it remains to be seen, and it will be an individual decision along with the doctors. Really good medical information there and the process of what is happening behind the scenes for Tua Tungabailoa and Miami. Tua telling NFL media over the weekend he has no plans to retire. It will be his decision along with his loved ones and his family. Dr. Chow, early in this year, there might not be a banged-up team more than that of the L.A. Rams. Yesterday on the road in Arizona, they got beat bad, 41-10. to 10. And with Puka Nakua on injured reserve, many offensive linemen already dealing with injury. Cooper Cup exits the game early as well. What is the field view or the six score overall of the L.A. Rams saying on this Monday? Well, look, Cooper Cup rolled his ankle. We're hoping it's not serious. An E-version ankle sprain, a different type of high ankle sprain. We'll see if he can come back or not. The only silver lining for the Rams is they're about to get their left tackle back. uh, uh, And that's the only silver lining. The whole left side of the offensive line has been out and a disarray with the center sliding over, et cetera. That's why we have two favorite games this week at six score. And we don't 
handicap games, we just do it off of field view and, and do the analysis. Our two favorites were the Arizona Cardinals and the other one was the Minnesota Vikings. Even though in the own in our own war room we were nervous about the Vikings against yeah. the 49ers. That's what our numbers said, and it bore out. Doc, six score has been hot here, and we got a big Monday night football game with some injury concerns. Number one for the Philadelphia Eagles, got A.J. Brown at the wide receiver position. And also, Doc, let us know, are we healthy at the quarterback position for the Atlanta Falcons with Kirk Cousins? Hmm. Well, we're healthy enough to play. Are we 100%? That's the question. Hmm. If you ask me, is he 100% on the Achilles? It's his back foot push off. No, neither is Aaron Rodgers, but they're able to play and be effective. I think it's still more scheme and new system than that. And the question now with A.J. Brown already ruled out for the Eagles, what does this really mean? You know, is there a domino effect in how the coverage changes on Devonta Smith? Obviously, you got Johan Dotson, who's relatively new still. Is there a domino effect without the bell cow, A.J. Brown, being in there? I think he's a mild hamstring, but early season, the Eagles didn't want to make it worse. So that'll be what's interesting to watch there. You see the field views for tonight in that perspective. That is key. That's at sixscore.com. Dr. Chow, just quickly here in the final minute. Last week on Monday night, Aaron Rodgers in Santa Clara. We asked you about the veteran quarterback coming off a torn Achilles. Same question for the 36-year-old Kirk Cousins. You mentioned he is healthy enough to play. How does he develop and get healthier throughout the season as he's still playing in NFL regular season games? Well, you know, obviously there's still lots of training room stuff and workouts, and, you know, it's a gradual process. But I really think the concern is just scheme and getting used to what's happening there. If you really get down to it, how many tight window throws does a quarterback make in a game? It's more about feel and timing and throwing to the right spot. Yeah, the tight window throws may lack in a little bit of accuracy because of push off. But overall, I think he could still have a good game here. First year in Atlanta, first year with new offensive coordinator Zach Robinson as well. The pro football dog, Dr. David Chow, appreciate your time.